Jean-Pierre, he was uh, a newly converted Christian. You know, with his first love, emotion about everything. It was very, it was very interesting to see him. And it was actually, it was a pleasure in the beginning to see the passion that he had. But then as he, he became part of the church and he started observing the people that had been there longer, he, he became surprised. After the surprise became disappointment. And after the disappointment came anger. Why do people were doing these things? I mean, he just had gone through all these Bible studies and learned all these things about Jesus and, and, and about following him. And then he came to church and people were doing something different. That's not possible. These people are so cold, he thought. I'm going to do something about it. So he started his own French revolution. Not just any kind of revolution, but a French revolution where he started cutting heads of those who weren't following exactly what he had studied and what he thought that the Bible was saying that we needed to do. On the other side was Joseph. Joseph grew up in church. He went to all the church schools from pre-K to university and then PhD. He did everything. But on his teens, late teens, he went through some trauma. And while he still went to the church schools, he ended up leaving the church altogether. For a while, he decided he was a non-believer. He was a highly trained professional, but a non-believer. And then he studied some about the, the Muslim belief, and he became a Muslim. And after a few years, he actually left that faith and decided to become Catholic. His family, but still remains the same church where he grew up, thinks that he's lost. They have lost any hope of he coming back to Jesus. And now he is totally bitter. Sandra, she received God's call. She, from the beginning, she knew that she was called to be a pastor. So she became a pastor. And when she started working in her first church, she, 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 she just was on fire. Oh, her first assignment, it was amazing. She was on fire. She loved Jesus and she was on fire for people to help them. It was just beautiful. But a few years passed and she got caught in the politics, in the red carpet, in the administration behind She started questioning her call. Was she really called to be a pastor? Maybe she should be something different. To be, <sighs> she wanted to quit desperately. Samuel, he had been in the same denomination for five generations. <laughs> Samuel knew absolutely everything from the beginning to the end, from the top to the he, he just knew everything. New pastors came, new people come to church, 
they all asked him because he knew absolutely everything. His life was there. And there, the church was his whole life. He's got everything figured out. And then comes Rebecca. Oh, man, Rebecca. She knows what to say. She's a smart woman. She knows church lingo. And she looks at the church members as members, not church friends, but members as clients, as a network to get what she wants. She's a great manipulator. And somehow, they all got in a room. Jean-Pierre quickly creates a set of rules to follow. He puts it in a way that is black and white. There is no question. He prints them. He puts them there on the room so everybody can see. It's very clear. But if you don't follow those rules as are posted on the main wall, then he will threaten you to censor you. Oh, yes, you go to censorship and you don't follow this. Then Joseph, the one that was bitter, shows signs of PTSD, post-traumatic syndrome disorder. He doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know how to deal with these people because he's enclosed in this room. So what he does is he sits on the floor right on the corner. He closes his eyes and waits for it, whatever it is. To please pass. Samuel, the one that had been in church for five years, no, it was the five, fifth generation in the same denomination. He thinks, okay, if I just try harder, I will make things work here. I just need to work harder. And he puts a smile. He knows how to do that. He does that every, every Saturday at church. He puts up a smile and says happy Sabbath to everybody. And to Joseph, the one who is at the corner sitting on the floor, he just totally ignores his tears. But he says happy Sabbath. And not a Jean-Pierre, the one who writes the rules. And he's still talking. He just, he just smiles and not. Rebecca, the manipulator, she thinks, what a great opportunity. I have everybody together here. So she sells a microphone in a soapbox to Jean-Pierre. She sells a self-help book to Joseph. She sells a suit to Samuel. And then she asks Sandra, the pastor, for a list of church members. Because you never know what she might need. Sandra, the pastor that wants to quit, is there in that room and she says, this is not what I was called to do. How can I reach to Joseph in that corner, especially if Jean-Pierre keeps that Spanish Inquisition attitude. And she goes and she says, I'm out of here. Where is the door? Where is the door? She finds the door and as she opens the door, she sees Jesus that is passing by outside, holding his cross on the shoulder on the way to the Calgary. And Jesus stops and looks at them, these five people inside the, inside the room. Jean-Pierre, Samuel, Rebecca, Joseph, Sandra, suddenly have nothing to say. They look at him.
in those eyes. Those eyes. The eyes from Jesus. They are so, so peaceful. So loving. So non-judgmental. And yet, they were piercing. It looked like Jesus' eyes could just see through. And Jesus' eyes saw through Jean-Pierre's hardened heart. Jesus' eyes could see through Joseph's bitterness, through Samuel's self-sufficing attitude, through Sandra's unbelief, and through Rebecca's greed. The cross on Jesus' shoulder make them shiver. But those eyes, there is something about Jesus' eyes. So the five Christians, the four plus one, the five actually follow him to a nearby mountain. And they look at Jesus as he peacefully sets the cross and climbs it. And then there is this, there is silence. While they look at the cross and they look at Jesus who is still is fixing the eyes on them. Rebecca stops selling, trying to sell people and to people. Samuel forgets about himself. Sandra's mind is clear. Joseph's bitterness fades away. And Jean-Pierre, Jean-Pierre feels a tear rolling down his cheek for the first time. Because they are at the cross. They are at a place where Mercy reigns and never dies. Where the streams of grace flow deep and wide. They are at the cross, which is a place where all the love ever found comes like a flood. Where sin and shame are powerless. Where the heart has peace with God and forgiveness. They gather at the cross. They surrender their lives. They surrender their lives to him. And they are in awe of Jesus. They are in awe of Jesus. And that, that is all that matters. 